My name is Sabrina Romanov, and in this video, I'm going to show you a couple of ways to use ChatGPT for learning. This is one of my favorite use cases for ChatGPT because it has such a broad base of knowledge. And the conversational approach makes it really easy to dive into a subject, ask clarifying questions, learn more. And now with the new ChatGPT search, you can click on links to read up even deeper on your topics. So the first thing I want to show you is a technique called the master student prompt, where you tell ChatGPT it's the master master of the subject, you are the student, and ChatGPT is going to start by explaining the subject at a high level, quiz your understanding, analyze your response, and then depending on your response, it'll clarify further with additional context and information and ask you another quiz and so on. It's basically an iterative teacher-student framework where ChatGPT is continually teaching you about a subject deeper and deeper, analyzing your understanding of the subject to tailor and personalize its answers to the level of understanding you're currently at. So if you're confused about a particular topic, ChatGPT will detect that, infer that from your response, and then provide additional information to help solidify your understanding. Here's the prompt, it's pretty long. The only thing you need to change is the subject here at the top in brackets. You can replace this with any topic or subject that you wanna learn. Let's say that you are a master of AI, okay? Go ahead and hit enter and you'll see the full prompt here. Prompt works as you tell ChatGPT what it's a master in and it's tasked with teaching a student until the student also achieves mastery. So ChatGPT explains the subject, then quizzes you, analyzes your responses, provides clarification and asks follow-up questions until you, the student, demonstrates a thorough understanding of the topic. And it begins by providing a clear explanation of the subject, including key concepts and fundamental principles. After after that initial explanation, then pose a quiz question to the students. While analyzing your response, ChatGPT is going to look at the accuracy of your answer, the depth of understanding demonstrated, and any gaps in knowledge. And then based on that analysis, ChatGPT will provide further feedback tailored and personalized to where you're currently at. And then here, this instructs ChatGPT to ask further follow-up questions to probe your understanding and address any areas of weakness. And this goes on and on. Continue the process of analyzing responses, providing feedback, and asking follow-up questions. So remember, I put in the subject AI. And now ChatGPT is starting by explaining a foundational topic in artificial intelligence machine learning. Here it's explaining the key concepts and principles. It's a subset of AI focused on training machines with data. And there are different types of machine learning, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning, key terms and concepts. Now that we've covered the basics, Let's test your understanding. Describe the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning. Give an example of a task suitable for each type of learning. Now, as an example, let's say we get one part of the question right and the other part is a little bit weak. Let's say supervised learning involves labeled training data. Example, training a training a machine learning model to detect email spam involves supervised learning by feeding in lots of labeled examples of spam emails and non-spam emails, something like that. And then let's say for unsupervised learning, like our, our understanding of it is super shaky. So unsupervised learning uh, involves no labeled training data, but I don't get how it's used in real world settings. You can type anything, honestly. Okay, so here ChatGPT actually recognized that we did a good job explaining supervised learning, correctly identified involves labeled data. Your example of span detection is a spot on. Regarding unsupervised learning, then it expands with more information. So here I said I really wasn't sure how unsupervised learning is used in real world settings. So it gave me three examples, customer segmentation, anomaly detection, and dimensionality reduction. Okay, so you see here what ChatGPT did is it analyzed my answer, reinforced what I got correct, which is my answer about supervised learning, and then it provided additional clarification on context on the part I didn't get correct, unsupervised learning. And then it asks a further follow-up question to dive deeper. Can you explain why customer segmentation, which is one of the examples it gave here, why is it a good fit for unsupervised learning? And the really cool thing was this prompt is you just keep going and going. 
and you can take it any direction you want. Like let's say your background is in business and this use case around customer segmentation is really interesting to you. You can just keep talking about customer segmentation and asking questions about it and ChatGPT will adapt, right? It'll analyze what you are understanding correctly. It'll analyze if you're asking any clarifying questions, it will try to provide helpful responses. And it's just a really fun interactive Q&A to learn any subject. And of course, if you want to add sources to each of ChatGPT's answers, make sure you turn on search the web here. Now, another way that you can use ChatGPT for learning is by using it to help you make flashcards. And flashcards are a really neat tool because it helps reinforce key information. So here's the prompt. I want you to help me create a set of flashcards for learning and retaining information on a specific topic. That's the only place you have to change. So let's say we want to learn about like TikTok, social media growth. So let's just turn on search the web as well so that we have sources for all of the information that ChatGPT provides. Click enter. And here's the prompt. So it's asking ChatGPT to organize flashcards in a Q&A format. Each card has a question and an answer. Cover the main concepts, key terms, essential facts. Divide the flashcards into basic, intermediate, and advanced. Use clear, straightforward language. Highlight any commonly confused concepts. For any challenging terms, include follow-up cards that rephrase the concept. Structure the questions to encourage spaced repetition, which is a way to optimize your learning. And here we go. So here's a structured set of flashcards designed to help you learn and retain information on TikTok's social media growth strategies. Basic questions, what is TikTok, okay? What is the For You page, okay? It's the main feed where the platform's algorithm curates videos. What's a hashtag challenge, okay? Intermediate levels. How does TikTok's algorithm determine which videos appear on a user's For You page? What's the significance of trending sounds? How can brands utilize branded effects? Okay, advanced level, why is authenticity important? How can brands leverage TikTok duets? How does TikTok's algorithm impact virality and brand exposure? Explain de-influencing and its relevance to TikTok marketing. Let's say you're brand new to TikTok, you know nothing about it. So this is really neat because, it, because ChatGPT basically took a topic and then broke it down into all of this different Q&A segmented into beginner, intermediate, advanced. And you can imagine importing this into a flashcard system like Anki. Let's say you're in high school or something studying for an exam, high school, biology, specifically mitochondria, which is one of the only things I remember from high school biology. Here are the basic flashcards now. What is the primary function of the mitochondria? I remember it generates energy for the cell. Why are they called the powerhouse, et cetera, et cetera? Where are they found? What does ATP stand for? Intermediate flashcards. How do they contribute to respiration? How do they regulate metabolism? What's the relationship between mitochondria and chloroplasts and plant cells? And advanced, advanced flashcards. Why does the inner membrane of mitochondria have a higher protein content than the outer membrane? Electron transport chain. Yeah, so literally any topic and you can learn through this kind of Q&A flashcards. Let's say you have like a bunch of study material already from your class or your work. Instead of just putting the topic here, you can feed all that information into ChatGPT. So for example, say here, retaining information on the provided sources. I'm going to put that in caps. And then at the very end, I'm going to say something like sources put an XML tag. This helps ChatGPT figure out what you're referencing when you say sources. And I would just paste the information here that you are trying to learn for school. Or you can also upload a PDF and you could say refer to uploaded PDF. So you can very much tailor this prompt to the information you have at hand so that ChatGPT focuses specifically on helping you memorize the information you need to memorize for your upcoming test or exam or whatever it is. All right, to wrap up, we covered two ways to use ChatGPT for learning. Number one, the master student prompt, and number two, creating flashcards for Q&A. My name is Sabrina Romanov. See you in the next